Yeah, great to be out on the field today. Beautiful day here in Northeast Ohio. Uh, great to be coaching these kids. And a lot of them are, are swimming, as you can imagine, with some of the mental things that we're putting on their plate. But they're very coachable, and I thought it was a really good day. Uh, so I'll take any questions that you have. Thank you so much, Coach. The first one will come from Tom Withers. Thanks, Rob. Hey, Coach, I almost didn't recognize you out there without your mask on. How good did that feel to take off? Yeah, that felt pretty good. There was, I agree, there were some people I didn't realize that's what they looked like. <laughs> um, hey, where does your eye wander today when, when you're out there? I know you've got a lot to look at, and I know you guys are going through you know, some fundamentals and some very basic stuff, but what were you really focused on out there? Yeah, Tom, I think you're watching all these positions and, and you're watching the coaches coach and you're seeing these young guys take information and take coaching and apply coaching to drills, uh, you know, just to come out there and see Coach Callahan and Scott Peters and Coach DeCosta are all surrounding James Hudson and they have him getting him into a three-point stance and, and just really the, the basics right now and working on the fundamentals. So it's just good to see our coaches get their hands on their guys and, and take them through. I mean, they took them, they, we walked through the drills before we did the drills. So this is very, this is baby steps, but it's important to, to start there with these young players. So a lot of really good technique work today. And we noticed that uh, Tony Fields was not out there. Can you give us an update there? Yeah, Tony, uh, he injured his foot. Uh, I don't know if it was a few days ago or a week ago. So uh, it's, he'll be out for a few weeks, uh, nothing, concerning long-term, uh, but that's where Tony was. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Tom. We'll go to Daryl Ryder next. Hey, Coach, you, you talked about the opportunity for your assistants to really get their hands on these guys. You know, we're used to obviously seeing, you know, 40, 50 guys at a rookie mini camp, but, and I'm sure as a coach, you would have liked to have more players out there, but just how much can this help these rookies this weekend, that one-on-one -on -one time, like JOK had three linebackers coaches around him working with him. So how much can that one-on-one -on -one time really push the progress forward for some of these young guys, considering once the veterans come in, that one-on-one -on -one time kind of goes away? Yeah, it was a really good teacher-student ratio out there at a few positions. Uh, so, yeah, it's really important. I, I think those guys are, are lucky, and, and, and they're, they're getting some high-quality instruction from the guys. And to your point, there's one guy in line. So you, you really slow down and you focus on that rep. And then you take a couple seconds off and you do the drill again. So uh, it, it really slows you down. It doesn't look like any other rookie mini camp that I've certainly been a part of, but that's okay. Uh, we really are getting a lot out of it. And, you know, when the weekend's over, just could you just summarize what you hope to take away, you know, from this weekend? Obviously, it's too early to draw any conclusions or anything like that but just from your perspective with the the limited camp just what are you hoping to come away from this weekend with yeah we want to teach the systems to these guys offense defense special teams and we want them to understand uh, what they're doing and then ultimately uh, see if they can contribute and, and that'll be based on what they can handle uh, we also want to get to know these young men and we want them to get to know their teammates and get to know their coaches so really acclimating them to how we do things around here Thanks, Daryl. We'll go to Didi Kinkabala. Hi, good afternoon. Um, this is kind of a little bit of a broader question. You're teaching the rookies your system right now because it's new to them. But your older guys, I mean, ideally, you're building off of what you did a year ago, right? You're expanding. So do you throw that at the rookies as well? Or when the, you know, what is the process of teaching and building off of what was done a year ago? Yeah, I think even with the returning veterans, Aditi, you start at the beginning. Uh, and, and I promise you that's all 32 clubs uh, do the same. You, you start right at the general info page one and you talk about the huddle and you talk about the personnel and, and the different hook drops and buzz drops on defense. So you, you really always start back at the, at the beginning. Uh, and it's, I think it's just an important way to teach. Uh, we don't wanna skip any steps. So these young players are really hearing it for the first time. The veterans are hearing it for the second, third, fourth time. Uh, but that's kind of where we start with the rookies. And then when they enter the meetings with the, with the veterans, then they need to catch up. And that's why we'll have extra meeting time with them. Uh, but we'll have plenty of time with them individually 
and try to catch them up as, as quickly as we can. Sort of to that same point, the last time that I remember talking to you, you said that this season doesn't pick up where last season ended. How do you, especially as there's all the external hype and excitement for the season, how do you drive that home besides just the words of that? Is, it, is there anything you do that makes it clear that last year doesn't mean anything this year? I don't think it's hard. I think our players are smart enough to realize that. Uh, so I think one way, like I said earlier, Aditi, is you go back to the beginning and, and uh, you you install plays that the guys have heard already, but you, you, you dig into the minutia of them. And, and that's part of being a pro is not getting bored. Uh, so we, we will start back at square one. And we, we've done that to a great extent with some of our meetings that we've had with the veterans to this point. Uh, but I just firmly believe that you got to go back and uh, – reinforce that foundation whether you, whether you feel like you build a foundation or not you feel, you definitely have to go back and reinforce it uh, year in and year out thanks Aditi. tony grossi is next and it looks like tony may have or tony are you there i'm here i couldn't, couldn't unmute can you hear me yes go ahead hello kevin Tony. Can you, okay, my, uh, it's tough in the parking lot. My uh, question is, uh, JOK, uh, do you see him as a player? Do you guys see him that over time, would that way, or do you even want him to add? Uh, Tony, you, bro you broke up a good amount. Let's give it a second. We'll come back to you in just a moment. Let's go to Nate Ulrich. Hey, Kevin, um, when it comes to the schedule release, I know you, you had some quotes that, that we all saw, um, but I'm just wondering in terms of getting a new defense up to speed and, and you know, a, a defense with so much new personnel, I, I should say, um, how do you look at that week one matchup against, we know how good they are on offense, Mahomes and, and Andy Reid and everybody? Yeah, Nate, I think they're an outstanding team, well coached, really great players, so uh, we know we have a lot of work to do before week one rolls around. Um, so we'll make sure that, that we utilize every meeting we have, all the time we have in the grass to, to, again, teach our systems, in some cases reteach the systems, and then get ready for the season. But uh, obviously, uh, you know, I have a ton of respect for the, the Chiefs. Did you and um, Joe Woods have conversations about, you know, the idea of getting all these new guys to gel and, how to how you guys can best expedite that because obviously you know it's great to have a bunch of new talent I, I just uh I still look at a lot of new parts and wonder if those are conversations you guys have yeah and, and you have to be intentional about it Nate and plan accordingly but you also look at last year and you could say you were teaching new systems to everybody on both sides of the ball uh so you know you, you do have returning players that have heard uh, some of what we've talked about now to your point about gelling absolutely and, and that's something that's important and that, that we'll work on in, in, in a bunch of different ways uh, but we'll, we'll just make sure that, that we teach at an appropriate speed and bring everybody along thank you Nate let's try Tony again how's this any better sounds better all right real quick uh, Kevin uh, JOK you love his speed and, and we're fine with his size do you see him as a player that would add weight over time I think he could, Tony. You know, he's young. Uh, a lot of these guys, we'll get them in our program. And uh, I think uh, Katie Messick, as our dietitian, uh, our, our strength staff, our high performance staff, will look at each of these guys and figure out what the appropriate number is for them to weigh, what the appropriate uh, pr uh, dietary program is, if you will. So it's, it's individualized for each of those guys, but JOK in particular. Uh, I'm comfortable with where he is, and, and, and I know he'll continue to grow just because he's a young player. If you still hear me? Yep. Can you? Um, since we won't talk to you next week, I don't think, do the rookies proceed to OTAs, and what are your expectations right now with veterans? The, uh, the rookies will stay here, Tony, so they'll be back in the building on Monday, and Past that, I'm going to just control what I can control. 
and and I think we'll learn more as we go. Thank you, Tony. Thank Jeff you. Fidel, you're up. seems that even after the draft, you guys really targeted defensive tackle. Like McDowell, a couple other guys. Is, was that an area you really felt needed to be reinforced? I think Andrew and the staff looked at every position, Jeff, and, and we're trying to make decisions to, to improve the ball club. And I think there were some opportunities there uh, recently that, that came about with a couple of players. But specifically identifying that one position over others, uh, it wouldn't be the case. I think Andrew and the crew do a really nice job of making sure that we're trying to improve the ball team at, at, in any way we can. Thanks, Jeff. Back to Nate Ulrich. Hey, Kevin, just to um, kind of clear this up, because I don't think I've seen you on the field with the Browns without a mask. Um, <laughs> Did you guys get like the memo before you got on the field? Did somebody come and tell you while you were on the field? And that, what was the timing of that? Yeah, uh, I got told while we were on the field. So just trying to make sure we're in compliance. Okay. And then uh, one more um, clarification. Tony Fields, was that something that, you know, he came to – he signed his contract obviously yesterday. So did he come to you guys and then – tell you about it? Did you know about it beforehand? And then is, you know, there, it sounds like there's no procedure needed. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. We, uh, you know, he told us about it and we're aware, you know, obviously you put all these guys through a physical uh, when they come in. So, but he'll, he'll be out for a few weeks, not, not concerned long-term. Thank you. Thanks, Nate. We'll take two more. Aditi Kinkawala and we'll close with Mary Kay Cabot. Aditi. Thank you. When you um, are having a rookie mini camp that is so unlike any other rookie mini camp, what are you really looking for from these guys right now? What are you assessing? I think, Aditi, you can learn a lot just even in walkthroughs. So there were times out there where uh, guys had the wrong drop on defense and they got corrected and then we did the rep again and they got it right. So it's kind of when I talk about really starting at the beginning with these guys, uh, we can go at that pace. We're afforded the luxury of going at that pace so that, that they can get it, that it can crystallize in their mind. And that's where the coaches are working really hard in the meeting rooms with them, uh, virtual meeting rooms, that is. And then on the field and, and making sure that this is uh, something that they're constantly improving upon, that their knowledge of our systems. So then to that point, obviously, this is football in shorts and obviously nobody's hitting, but has anybody, even on day one, is there anyone that in any way has stood out in set? I mean, was somebody a great listener? Was somebody really vocal? Is there any piece of color you could give us? I'd love to give you some color here. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, Aditi, honestly, day, day one of a rookie mini camp where you have so few guys, it's, it's just seeing them out there on the field with the coaches. That was all the color I needed. You know, I get to look out the, the my window and I see these beautiful fields and it looks a lot better when there's players and coaches out there. Thank you. Thank you for letting me try. <laughs> Thanks, Aditi. And we'll wrap up the press conference with Mary Kay Cabot. Uh, hey, Coach, just wondering if you had a chance to uh, watch very much of Anthony Schwartz today. He... You know, you could see the speed was evident, but he also dropped a couple of passes here and there. I don't, it almost looked like he had a little bit of rookie jitters going on or something like that. So just what did you think of the day that he had? Yeah, Mary Kay, I thought he looked, I didn't get to watch him uh, the whole time, but I'll, I'll go back and watch the tape. But I think you got to remember these guys are, are throwing and catching uh, with that battery of thrower and receiver doing it for the first time. So they're not going to have uh, pinpoint precision just yet between the two of them. Uh, but he's uh, he's taking coaching. Coach O'Shea is working him very hard in the meeting room and out there on the field. So he's doing just fine. 